Hi, <laughs> welcome back to our hydroponic training online. And I just had a few questions for you. Do you like to eat fresh salad and veggies on a daily basis? Do you want food that you know is safely grown, harvested, and distributed to your family? Do you have a little bit of space and a little bit of time? And do you wish someone <laughs> would take you through how to do that step by step? Then you're, did I describe you? Then you're in the right place. And that's exactly why Carol and Melissa, my friends, are on this journey with me. They are with the Get Growing Hydroponics training online session. This is session number four. This is session number four. And it is about do-it-yourself paint. And I actually, I asked them because they are both using the tank kits. And I said, do you, do you, you don't have to be a part, but would you like to be a part? And they said, definitely, because they want to expand what they are doing. They want to be able to expand what they are doing. So at some point, so they are with us today. If you can't remember what I list, if you can't remember what I list for you to use, go to hydro, the number four, food, hydroforfood.com and look on the resource page. It will tell you all those tools. And you can see uh, last session, I said I like power tools and this session, <laughs> I actually have two. <laughs> so here's the first thing you're going to need. You're going to need a, low profile tank you'll need a low profile tank why low profile because if it's too tall it will not accommodate your lights on the shelves and it won't have enough you need approximately 10 gallons if you find a low profile tank online somewhere or you come across some in a store buy them, <laughs> especially if for a good price, uh, they disappear almost immediately. If you can, if you can um, find one in a darker color on the bottom, that's better because it eliminates algae. I know some people spray paint the outside. I like to go ahead and buy them in a darker color if at all possible. And some of my tanks are gray and that works too, either one. So I have a low profile and I have to have a lid. Now, one other method is to use, this is a food service tray. And this is for a smaller system. I want to have enough gallons, enough liquid nutrient in. I want to have enough of the nutrient for approximately oh, about four to six liters per plant I'm growing so that it has enough approximately four to six liters for the plant I'm growing. Let's start with this one. We take the lid. You can see I've already made one mark. Well, how did I determine that? I, we, <laughs> at one point I did multiple patterns. I had all the holes cut out. I put the pattern on top. And I can tell you, this is about the hydroponics made simple step-by-step, step, as simple as possible. So here's what I did. And if we could have the, the uh, camera just a little bit lower, here's one thing that we did. All that you have to do is place the cup, just place the cups, the net cups upside down where you will want them. They are approximately six inches approximately six inches at the least. And that is optimum for, I want, my, I want my heads of lettuce, if I grow lettuce, if I grow bok choy, if I grow other vegetables, I want to make sure that I have enough room for them. We, I've, I've done calculations on it, and this has been the, the easiest way and the best way to do it. I then take a marker and I just simply mark around where I have the cups. I use a dry erase marker so I can erase it if I need to. I mark around a cup and I mark the center. 
So how many cups do you see, net cups? Eight. Eight, eight, very good. We have, we have eight net cups and the eight net cups, I'm happy with that. If I am, if I, I have at different times, and sometimes when I'm just starting seed, I, I know this is something that Carol does a lot of, and, and Melissa has done a lot of outside gardening, outdoors. And so this may be use one that I start seeds with. You'll see back here, we have an even smaller one in a DIY tank. And this one has, I believe it was close to 40, 40 holes in it. And those will be transplanted outside into the outside. But you can see from this, <laughs> it's not going to give my plants enough room. More than the room, if I have this many heads of lettuce, it will, in large plants, the roots will not be able to receive enough nutrients and enough air. With me so far? Yes. Great thumbs up. Love that. Instead of watching me the entire time drill holes in all, uh, all eight holes, what I decided to do was just show you one and show you the process. You don't have to have a cutting board underneath it. If you'll just put a double cardboard, just a cardboard box or double cardboard, put the lid on top. And then I would recommend safety glasses safety goggles and why because um well because they're safer <laughs> and i would also recommend wearing gloves because we are using a drill and a saw and i have uh, at one point i was not using gloves and inadvertently picked up the drill and the whole saw so this is the whole saw bit and if you'll notice you see it's going in reverse doesn't seem to make sense. It does on the plastic. When you go in reverse, it is less likely to break the plastic. You don't need to heat the plastic. I read people were heating implements. People were heating the plastic. People were using uh, knives. And this is honestly, I know it's the last time I checked, they were approximately $7 for one. You can buy some in different sizes. You can buy a whole saw kit so that you can use it in um, for various projects. I just found it was less dangerous to use the hole saw. You're going to take and place, you're gonna place the hole saw inside the circle. So we're inside the circle and we're aiming this bit in that center portion. I'm on top of that. And then I am going to press. <laughs> And <laughs> I have stuffing in the box, but if you will look to see, <laughs> I did go through the box. And actually, I save these pieces here. I save these pieces <laughs> to put on net cups that don't have a plant or have a plant that died. Well, let's see what happened. There we go. And it's done. And you can take, if you want to take, you can take sandpaper and you can remove some of that. And there you have the hole. And you'll do eight of those. What other hole do you need? You're going to need another hole. And the other hole that you're going to need is going to use a drill with a quarter inch bit. And what we're, what's our take? Oh, we've got now, we've got room in our DIY tank. We're going to have all a place for all the net cups. But what else do we know needs to go in a, a, a dark, deep water culture tank? What else is it that we have to have? Aerator yep. and tube. Air, yay! Yeah. <laughs> I learned. <laughs> yay! So we have to have air. So one of the things that we used to do is, and you'll see it in my course, and I don't know if this one has it. I think this one did not have it, but some of the lids, this one does. This lid, we put, I put the hole right here. 
What I would do differently is I would put the hole on the side of, uh, on the side of um, right here. So I want you to go as far up as you can, mark it, mark it and go up as far as you can on the tank. And here's why. You want as much nutrient as you need to start off seedling. And why don't we put it anymore? Why isn't it, why don't I drill a hole in the lid? <laughs> when we go to harvest together, one of the things we're going to want to do when we harvest is we will take an extra tank and we will just take simply take the lid off and place it in the tank and then this tank, we can cut and come again because this tank will remain the way it is, especially if the parts per million are good, the pH is good, and the nutrient is still good. So we did, that is a DIY tank. Now, what were some other things that we're going to need? Well, Melissa said it, and I think that Carol said it too. We're going to need our aeration, an aerator pump. We're going to need the tubing a check valve facing the direction of the stone so that air goes through it and an air stone. Now I had to show you here is this is another type of drill bit. It's a step drill. And what it does is it will let you go in as far as you need to. So you could use this kind of drill and this one's not dangerous. Thing. I lose bits, so this is a magnetic holder for whatever bits I'm taking out of my drill. <laughs> and I, I know, <laughs> and I know that both of my friends on uh, this training with me uh, both like uh, like tools, so I know that they would appreciate mm -hmm. that. Questions? Do you have a uh, question, Melissa? Do you have a question? about DIY tape. Well, I, I was wondering, and you did kind of answer this already, but I was wondering what happens when inevitably one of the plants dies and it's not covering up anymore. And I was going to ask, I liked how you said if you had those nice little circles that fit perfectly, which is a great tip. And would it, I guess I'm just wondering, would it also work to fill with those stones that are in the network? Yes. Yes, it's good enough. Both. <laughs> yes. sure. Because I know that yours are not growing at the same rate. So here's yeah. one that's so, just filled with leka or okay, so the then, lava. Okay. And but I'm I have I I just added a third row, and so I'm going to have <laughs> I, I'm running out of leka. I'm running out of pebbles, and that's one of the reasons why I save the 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 board. I save some of those or the plastic so I can put it in there because sometimes in for if you look to see, you see the level, the level of these, if you can look to see the level of the light. And these are plants that are, this is day number three in the, this is day number three in the tank. And let's see, I pulled out one today that had a wonderful, let's see, where was it? Uh -huh. Oh, here it is. This is day number three in the, I transferred the seedlings into the tank. And this one, the water, could you see it dripping when I pulled it up? Oh, you yeah. You see it dripping. But do you see the tap root? Yeah. You like it? So there's the tap. There and do you see the little, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I come, I know that plants don't necessarily grow because you talk to them, but they do like air and uh, I came out and said you need to grow <laughs> <laughs> so then I pulled it up and I, I found the tap room yes yay! <laughs> because I know if they're going like that and I'm just keeping track of how fast they grow uh, and and how well they do however up here we're about to harvest we're a week away from harvesting up here and I know I've been showing you the same uh, green butter lettuce each week we've been reviewing and this is the green butter lettuce this week it's beautiful oh, oh and i, I love to pluck one and eat it right now <laughs> you know i, I kind of do too um wait which one i'll eat one for you 
Yay. <laughs> it's delicious. It looks very good. <laughs> it does. It has, it has great flavor. I'm giving it another week, though, because if you'll look to see, some of those inner leaves are going to mature. And green, but I just listened to Johnny Seed, a webinar on the, from them. And they said that the green butter does better than the red butter, but that's just in their test. Thank you for your question, Melissa. Sure. Carol, any question about do-it-yourself tanks? I don't think so. That was very thorough. I, uh, <clears throat> I, I'm glad you mentioned about six inches apart for each hole. So, I mean, but I guess as many as you can fit and then to weed them out as you go. Makes sense. Excellent. Very good point. One of the things when you expand, one of the things that you may have is that you're going to, you may expand your pump. And this is a splitter. So all of these are on four-way splitters. There are four tanks, but there are, I'm sorry, five-way, uh, four-way splitters. There are four tanks going across, four tanks going across, and the hose is run by one pump. The hose is run by one pump. This pump, we have tried to recycle and reuse and repurpose. If you notice it's on wood, that was to keep it quieter. And uh, it has been replaced by the pump that I have on my resource page because you don't hear the pump on my resource page. This one just about made me quit growing plants in my garage. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> because every time I walked out, all I could hear was me. And I kept telling myself, that's the sound of plants growing. That's the sound of plants growing. And I said, no, 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 we have to stop. This is, no, no, we have to change this. I can't do that anymore. All right, so we are, that is, that is really DIY tank. That's DIY tank, you just add the components. I wanted you to share the successes. I showed you the green, the head of green butter lettuce. What's the success you've had as part of this, uh, of our training online? Carol, you wanna start us out? From the whole, the beginning? Or are you still any, any time, any <laughs> point of it. Um, my success is that I have learned how to do this. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I got the, I guess it, my plants got a, a fungus or a virus the first uh, try around. They, they all died except for two. And I actually took one of those and put it out into my raised bed. And I'm so surprised it's still living because I didn't think that would make it. It was so tiny. It just had didn't even have real leaves. It just had the two leaves that start, seed leaves, and it's still growing out there. So I was very surprised. Nice. It, that's something you can do if it seems to be a failure, you can try. Um, I restarted seeds. I have two basil that have come up and I'm really hoping for more. And if I don't, I think maybe I, it's probably me. I, maybe the room is too warm. There's too much condensation. Maybe the heat mat is a little too hot for it. I'm going to experiment in a couple of different ways. And I also think maybe I can start them out and at least get them growing, maybe with the paper towel method or something, and then put them in the median and see if that works for me. I, I know it's something that is the environment I'm working with. So I'm going to try a little. And I just, I absolutely love your attitude about that because you really are, you're changing the variable. And that is when you teach what they teach in Texas right now, I live in central Texas, what they teach in Texas right now, when they assess it, the science, it's paper and pencil, paper and pencil, but they want to know about a very, but students should know what happens when you change one variable. And that's what you're doing it. And, and we talked about this too in a, in a follow-up that, that we discussed that you were going to try one variable at a time. And I brought my shelf, the shelf that normally is here, I brought it inside and I'm going to do the same thing. And we are actually using right now, my husband just planted some seeds in cotton and we put one on a plant heat mat and the other on the counter. 
and we're seeing what happens. We're doing our own variable. We're just trying one variable. I am pleased. And he, uh, he and I discussed that um, when you try indie planting, I don't know that if that's always applied to you because you have, have had great success. You're a successful gardener. And one, uh, ha one of the things that happens when you garden of any sort, you in experience the death of plants. <laughs> I, understand plant that. I understand that. And I think that's why I'm not as discouraged. I, I might uh, say that anybody taking this course that feels like, oh, I just, I'm no good at it. it it's not really about that. It's just um, trying it a little bit different ways. Again, like I think maybe my room is a little too warm. I mean, so it's not like, well, this didn't work. I'm going to quit because I have that outside as well. And I'm used to that. So I don't want anyone to be discouraged if it doesn't work the first time. You just got to keep trying. Thank you. Thank you. Muchas gracias. <laughs> All right. Melissa, what's uh, one of your successes? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll pick you back on what Carol is saying, because ever since I lived in Phoenix and just couldn't grow anything, no matter how I tried, and Phoenix was a hard environment, but I, ever since then, I have very little perseverance when it comes to growing and I tend to give up very easily. So I think having this class was really a great motivator for me and doing it with you and hearing, you know, the trials and things. And it makes me feel like, oh yeah, no, I can, I can keep going and I can keep doing this. Don't give up. So just what Carol is saying. Yeah. And my, my next seeds, they are doing much better than my first, so that's great. And then also the thing I really like is I had like a little aerial garden that you, you know, you pour your little mixed stuff in and it always really bothered me that I had no idea what was in that little plant food they gave me. And I always said to my husband, you know, if they stopped selling this, I wouldn't be able to grow anything because I wouldn't know how to make it in it. That always really bothered me. So I think when we mixed up that five gallons of nutrient, that that was really good for me. And I felt like, wow, I kind of know what I'm doing now. <laughs> <laughs> and, was... and, and what we realized through all of our research is that there is, in, in fact, I have a free download if you go and subscribe to uh, my newsletter on hydroforfood.com. I, I, ha I put together, here is some of uh, what works for me and advice from 50 different experts. And what we've shared back and forth is that there is no one single right way. It's because it's temperature as well. It's the air. Some people have an easy, you know, it's, so some people put fans. I'm just I, I'm just thrilled that we're doing this together and that we are stopping and talking about it because sometimes I, I can't tell you how many people I've run into who said I've, I had a hydro kit at home, but I just didn't do anything with it. Or I started and the first ones dampened off and, and that was it, <laughs> you know? And so yeah, we're, yeah. that's why we're doing this together. All right, so we've got, Seeds of different rates. In fact, the plants that I had growing in, if you'll see, these are the same age as this. You know what the difference was? This was sitting in the growth, the DWC, the deep water culture tank with aeration that was by our garage door. And because of that, all the cold was hitting it. So I've now taken it, I've said it can grow, <laughs> that I believe in it and I put it more isolated near the insulation and so that it's warmer. This has always been in the, the warmer location. Wow. I will be curious, yeah. but that is just from temperature. That's so interesting. And you wouldn't think that, and I didn't think it would happen, but I started, I looked at it, <laughs> something has to change. <laughs> so I did that and looked at the difference in the root. Wow. Wow, that's, that's, that's pretty incredible. I'm glad you shared that.
that sums up our session. We used a low profile tank, six to 10 gallons, 10 gallons optimum. We used a hole saw, three inch hole saw, three inch cup. We uh, used a drill going in reverse. We had a tank with a lid. We also put, an, and there's a, we put a hole in the side in the end so that we could, and I've got one right here. We put a hole in the end. You can see the hole for the tubing so that we can have aeration. And if we stop there, we have, we have the net cup, the tubing, the DIY tank, and we have perseverance and patience so that we can have salad and vegetables every day. Thank you for being a part of session number four, DIY Tank. See you next time when we're going to be harvesting. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.